But we're back again for video six. I'm not quite sure what happened at the end of video five. Seems like I lost some footage. I think I was having some uh, memory user issues on my phone. So uh, let me cover what I was going to cover at the very end of that. Uh, what I was going to talk about was the final ring installation on the pistons. Um, here's one that's complete. I'm not yet worried about the ring gap orientation which uh, we will have to look at but uh, basically what you see there is uh, the number one and number two compression rings and then you see primarily what you see is the separator for the oil rings and then the oil rings are above and below the separator so uh, you can see through there those are the, the wrist pin clips and the wrist pins so anyway pistons are all together got eight of them and we'll worry about their orientation whenever we actually install them in the motor so we're good on that where we're at now is it's time to install the crank uh, as part of installing the crank that means you install the main bearings uh, we have all new main bearings again they're stock as is the rebuild so dimensionally uh, we presume that they're correct uh, the, the bearings come in two halves uh, they are uh, it's important how they come, how they're installed. If you'll look right in that, uh, right in this area here, there's a notch. The portion that goes to the block has got the hole in it, and then there's a mating oil hole uh, just on the other side of that bearing. If you pop it, pop it out of there. Uh, I've installed them. I also installed assembly lube on their surface on the face so that whenever the uh, crank is set in there that uh, that they're good to uh, good to go also I've installed, if we can see them here oops, wrong way, there we go installed the thrust washers, there's one on each side um, the thrust washers need to be also uh, lubed with assembly lube there's a surface on the crank which we'll look at later uh, that runs uh, in close proximity there so you want those to be lubricated as well for for startup the uh, the uh, thrust washers will be ultimately will be captured keep from keep them from rotating this way uh, once the uh, the bed plate is placed on there so I'm going to go ahead and place the crank in there we'll take a look at it and then we're going to talk about about the clearances that are required on the uh, main bearings okay so the crank is set in place now into the uh, half of the uh, bearings that are set in the block now let's look here at this thrust washer where the thrust washer installs you see I'm having trouble seeing through my own lens um, but where the thrust washer is installed right in this area here uh, there's a, a bearing surface a surface on the crank that runs against that thrust washer uh, and that's where we were talking about you want to add some additional lubrication uh, right in here to make sure that as it uh, as the crank turns against that that uh, thrust washer that everything is as it should be alright let's talk a little bit about these bearings. These bearings, uh, by all appearance, uh, just at first glance, are metal on metal type bearings. In reality, uh, these bearing surfaces uh, are not that at all. Oil comes up through that hole in the uh, lower half or the half in the block, um, and then it moves around that uh, groove that's in the washer in the bearing face and lubricates this entire surface as well as pumps oil into the crankshaft itself some of which will then come out through your journal bearings which is where each piston connects and will also lubricate that joint so it's very important that the clearance be correct if the clearance is either t if the clearance is too loose uh, on this on this bearing surface then you will not have adequate oil pressure if the clearance is too tight you will not have adequate oil flow to get into that 
into that bearing space and maintain lubrication. So, one case you're going to burn up a bearing, in the other case you're going to have inadequate oil pressure. Uh, either way, you want it right. So, how do you know it's right? Well, presumably for a stock rebuild, uh, you just use stock bearings and everything's good. But you don't ever know that for sure. So, what we're going to do is we're going to gauge that space and we're going to make sure that we have the correct, uh, correct variation. Uh, the way you do that is by using something called plastic gauge. I'm not going to uh, not going to necessarily have a big tutorial on plaster gauge. There's some of those up there on YouTube. Welcome to go look at them. But uh, we will show you the steps as we go along, and that requires that we install the mains, the top of the the other half of the main, which is not here now, main bearings, and those are embedded in the bed plate. And so we'll have to actually install the bed plate and at least the main bolts on the bed plate, not all of the bolts. Now here's the other bearing half already installed into the uh, into the bed plate again there's an alignment notch that tells you when you're in the right place and then of course they should be flush from side to side if they're not you just simply push them down a little bit until you get them flush at, at both surfaces so anyway so we're going to go and begin the process of plastic gauging to make sure that we have the right clearances in our main bearings. Okay, so we're getting ready to plastic gauge these main bearings. Let's look at see if we can look closely at a piece of plastic gauge. Basically, it looks like in this case I'm using the green plastic gauge because it has the smallest clearance measurement capability. It looks like a small piece of in this case green thread or heavy thread. Um, and if you'll notice at each main, there's one there. I have a small piece of this green plastic material. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the bed plate and we're going to torque the main bolts. There's 10 of those. We're going to torque those main bolts. We're not going to seal the bed plate on. At this point we're just going to torque those down to spec and then we'll release them and come back and see how, com how much compression we've generated uh, on the plastic gauge to tell us what our clearances are in our mains and make sure that we have the right amount of oil flow uh, not too little and not too much. I'll check back in a minute. Okay so we've gotten the bed plate installed temporarily. There's no adhesive between the bed plate and the block and uh, so we've, we've gone through the proper torque patterns, bolt placements, on all the mains, but I have not installed any of these uh, external bed plate bolts at this point. So we just have the 10 main bolts put in. Now we're going to take it back off and we're going to look at the plastic gauge. Okay, bed plate is back off again. Now let's look at the results of our plastic gauge. First, let's see if we can see this. You see, there's a little strip. That is the compression on the plastic gauge. Excuse me, let me get it right here. And then if you look at every at every main we see, this one's actually uh, where are we at? There we go. This one's actually quite faint, but you can see it. And so then all we need to do is determine the dimension of that plastic gauge after it was compressed, and that'll tell us exactly what our clearance is. My estimation is is that using the gauge that comes with it that we're at about 15 ten thousandths of an inch. Now I'm going to just jump ahead and tell you I measured them all and they're all within reason uh, about 15 let me get another one for you here. It's kind of hard to get that one. Alright, we don't get there. Hang on a minute. There we go. There's one for you. Again, they're all right at 15 ten thousandths. Now, so what? Is that good or is it bad? If you look, let me find it here. If you look on your crankshaft specs, and if you look at the bearing clearance, it says we should be at 8 ten thousandths to 21 ten thousandths of an inch. So we're at 15 ten thousandths. So that tells us that we're in spec 
on all the main bearings. So from here we go. We put down the proper bead of sealant all the way around Mopar Gen 2 sealant. We put the bed plate back on. Uh, we used this time we used the assembly lube. We did not use the assembly lube on the top half of the bearings um, last time because we knew we were going to be taken back apart. So this time we'll use the assembly lube on the top half of the bearings, already some on the bottom half. And uh, go ahead and put this bed plate on and consider this crank installed and we can move on to pistons. That's going to be another day. It's getting quite late here. So I'm going to see if I can get this, uh, get this bed plate installed and get this crank finished, check its rotation. And uh, then we'll come back at these pistons tomorrow. Y'all have a good night and we'll see you again on another video. Thank you.